Hello everyone, it's Ricardo from MyMaker and today I will be speaking once again about the Anisio Print Composer A4 and specifically about the co-extrusion technology that they are offering to you. What's the logic behind the process, how is that it works and how much it will improve your parts. By the way, today we will be stuck to Anisio Print's technology and not the whole spectrum of different ways of uh, manufacture using composites or even 3D printing composites. If you would like to see a bit more about that, there's plenty of stuff online, even YouTube, by an isoprint or not. Just go and check, there's plenty of stuff. And of course, if you would like to get more specific information, just get in touch with us as usual. Now, I will just show you some slides. I will be telling you what about them, and then we can just do a quick close. And of course, after, in some other videos, we will be navigating the software and our own tips. Let's take a look. So, why continuous fiber 3D printing? Over here we can see some of the reasons. Uh, of course you can produce fixtures, spare parts, functional prototypes. I forgot to say before that actually due to the high accuracy and repeatability you can consider as well the machine as a production unit. Of course we have the typical numbers, 30 times stronger than plastic, 7 times lighter than steel and 2 times stronger and lighter than aluminium. These are some of the examples of different plastics that you could be using with an isoprint and basically as you can see in the pictures you wouldn't even imagine that they are reinforced with any kind of fiber inside. You can use any of them and the only way in which you would know is suddenly if they are transparent or natural color and on a personal note I actually like how it looks in any case too. This is a really important part from my point of view and is uh, identifying the difference between materials that are filled with carbon fiber or reinforced. And basically you would have the filled with, which is these two, they do have particles or short bits of fibers. Whilst if you check here, you have the real reinforced, which is with endless or continuous fibers. The funny thing is that with the composers from Anisoprint, you will be using both cases together to generate an amazingly beautiful and functional part. This quick example, you can just verify the difference uh, you have. If you go with the filament that has bits of fiber inside, for this part you will spend 41 grams and 4 hours, and the cost of it will be 5 euros. But the maximum load is limited to 16 kilos. Whilst if you use it with anisoprinting with continuous fibers, of course the price increases by up to 6 times, around 30 euros, but it's the same amount of material, it's 4 hours too, and the maximum load goes up to 340 kilograms, which is all almost 22 times. So what is, uh, what's happening inside the extruder? Basically you have, we could reckon two extruders. On the left we have the typical hot end, one input of plastic and plastic going out as well. But then on the right side we have the one that is the composite one. In one input of course you have the plastic to choose and then you have the composite fiber getting in everything is mixed you have the that circle there is the cutter that will cut the fiber on the exact point that is needed and then uh, the rest of the plastic will push everything and co-extrude this by matrix composite if we want to go in detail of what's happening in that right side this would be pretty much a scheme showing you that and you can see clearly how the plastic on the right side is uh, getting inside that um, melting chamber you have the fiber, call it carbon or basalt, and the cutter, of course, in this one you see it as uh, just a normal cutter, it's actually cylindrical, it's really well thought. And then after, from the nozzle, you will have the bimatrix composite already mixed, and exactly the perfect measurements. In terms of plastic part entities, we have pretty much four different parts that could be related in terms of the plastic extruder, and of course in your part, you will have the external shell, plastic perimeters, solid infill, and even cellular infill. In terms of the composite one, you will have the reinforced perimeters and the reinforced infill. Of course, depending on which license you are getting, you will gain more or less power of this particular part of the operation. We understood about the difference between uh, reinforced and filled materials. I can speak about the materials provided by Anisoprint, which by the way are made by Polymaker, and those are the Nylon Smooth and the Nylon CFC, or CFCPA and PA Smooth. P basically, the CFCPA would be basically plain nylon, is perfect for co-extruding that with the reinforcement fibers, nothing else besides that. And the Polysmooth is basically um, filled with the um, carbon fiber and is the one that is giving you the really nice finish of your parts. 
take a look at this example. It will picture really clearly the power of reinforcement fibers when anisoprinting. We can take an example of this shape and basically you have plastic 50% lattice infill, you have a strength of 20 megapascals and of course that means 50% of the part in strength and also 50% of its weight. Let's suppose you want to go 100% like full solid. You will have uh, 40 megapascals of strength and of course 100% weight, 100% strength. Now what happens if we actually want to modify and start playing with composites, with real reinforcement? Then you will gain. Uh, with just a 30% lattice infill of composite, you are having 30%, 35% of weight and 350% of strength. You will get 140 megapascals alongside x-axis and 95 on the y-axis. If you wonder why is that you have different values, well, if you take a look alongside y-axis, you have less reinforcement lines, let's say, or fibers, and also the ones that are in angle alongside x, they are in an angle that is um, towards more the x-axis, that's why you have a stronger part. In this scenario that you would like to make this uh, more even in x and y, uh, you would just simply have to modify the angle in order to make it more, let's say, 45 degrees. So actually the strength is divided equally in both of the axes. If you wonder why, it's simply because, as I mentioned before, the composites are unidirectional. They will always go, the reinforcement happens following the fibers. It's along the fibers, parallel to the bed, if you prefer, call it in that way. And that's why it's so important that you orientate your part in an efficient way. In this case, you can see just by looking at the triangles that all the reinforcement is divided equally. You have everything happening on 0 degrees, 60 degrees, 120 degrees and of course 180 which becomes zero on all the axes all the strength and the reinforcement is happening evenly in every direction of course on that plane i wanted to show you this example too simply because i realized i'm showing you only normal lattice examples lines triangles but one thing that they always like to remark in any print is that you can go for complex shapes like curvilinear like this one take a look how it goes from typical lines, just flat trajectories to suddenly developing curves. And that's how they managed to go with this case study that you can check online and it's really, really interesting. They finally nailed how to sort out this part. Of course, how to do all these things is as simple as the power of their own software, which is called Aura, and you will have different licenses. We will go into this in the next video. But anyway, I wanted to show you pretty much the power of it, what you can do, even though it will really depend on which kind of license you want to go for. And of course, we will give you a lot of details, a lot of tips as well, so you don't skip any kind of step in your learning path. Over here as well, as you can see, you have all the different profiles of different providers as well. So you don't have to waste a lot of time or even money, material on finding the right settings. If you choose an extended um, license, for example, you can access already to a huge list of uh, different materials. And those are pre-approved, pre-optimized by Anisoprint. So you just have to choose whatever you want to use, uh, uh, slice and just run the print, which is actually a really good factor to consider. So everyone, I just wanted to stop on this slide in particular because it's uh, related to the software itself. And actually our following video will be specifically about software and licensing. And then of course, we'll be closing with our own tips. Uh, we hope that this clarified a bit about how much uh, it can improve your actual production, as it's not only for quick prototypes and that's pretty much limited now you can speak of a unit of production so if you would like to get any more details get in touch with us get in touch with any sprint as well if you prefer but don't miss this opportunity because it's an amazing unit thank you so much